Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Let's start with what the Saints did in round one. Uh, they moved twice. They moved into round one for a second first round pick and then moved up to get Chris Alave. So they land on Alave and Penig. Your reaction to what the Saints did on Thursday? I think they were necessary moves for a team that is right in the middle. Like the NFC's watered down. I don't think this is obviously as good of a roster as what the Saints had during the prime of Drew Brees era, but wide receiver was a gigantic need and certainly left tackle was as well. So I, for as much as I normally would like teams to trade up to pick a quarterback, I can understand and respect that the brain trust within the Saints organization feels like, hey, we can make the playoffs and anything can happen in the playoffs. What we need is a receiver and a left tackle, and they did what they needed to do to get two relatively good ones, I think, uh, at 11 and 19 overall in Chris Olave and Trevor Benning. I think most people here know what the Saints are getting in Chris Olave. The question is a small school lineman. What can you tell us about Penny and how he fits as an option at left tackle this year? Yeah, I had a first round grade on him. I think he's got actually a pretty high floor. And why I'm saying that is not because uh, he's a tremendous freaky athlete. I think at 6'6 six, six and 330, he doesn't have to wait that half of season or a full season to uh, be able to meet the strength that he's going to face at the next level. That's usually the case for all rookie offensive linemen. I, there was one game where Northern Iowa at the beginning of the season faced Iowa State, and he had some struggles. Beyond that, though, he was dominant, and that's what you certainly want from a smaller school tackle. You want the trait. You want the size, which you usually don't get, but you do get that with Penning. So I liked it because it was a need. I think it will take him some time to deal with the speed around the corner that he'll see at the NFL level. So Saints fans should not expect Teron Armstead or even rookie year Teron Armstead. Hmm. I would say by November or December, he'll be a good tackle. If there was a big surprise, mostly here, Chris, getting – Olave, Penig, everyone here celebrated because it's like your two biggest needs. You got them in the first round. It was players most mm -hmm. people wanted. Alante Taylor in round two. This guy got to meet at SEC Media Days last year and was very impressive. But a lot of people were a little confused with how he might fit with New Orleans and what their needs are. So let's first start with your scouting breakdown of Alante Taylor, the player. He is so explosive. That is what really popped on film, and I think that's what ultimately led to him being a top 50 pick. Not only just explosive in coming downhill to make a big hit on an outside run play or a screen or a swing pass, but if he's beaten at the line of scrimmage as a corner, he can hit the accelerators and recover, and that is huge. It's big in the SEC, and in today's NFL – with the fact that you can't put your hands on receivers and there's so many high-end receivers in the NFL, it's not really how much you can lock them down and beat Darrell Revis. It's can you recover? So I think that's part of the reason why he was picked so early or big reason. Um, he's an older prospect. That was why it was a little head-scratching for me. And he can recover, but he's going to get beaten off the line and with intricate routes relatively often because he's not – Super sudden, his change of direction ability is not amazing. But super experienced, the explosion is there. He's seen every route concept. He's seen every play design. I think he, he kind of feels a little bit like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson in that he's mm. going to usually be in the right place at the right time and kind of add that assertiveness or more assertiveness to the secondary. Can he play safety or, or is he an outside cornerback? I would play him at safety. Like, if you're going to tell me that they're going to play him at safety, I think that would be a much better situation for him where, like I mentioned, where you can just watch the quarterback and attack and use his explosiveness to his uh, advantage. If he's asked to, like, cover wide receivers that are super good at getting open that can separate with quickness and route salesmanship, that's where I'm a little concerned about Alante Taylor. Uh, if he played safety, I think he could really be 
a ball hawking type that has three, four, five interceptions and can run the alley on those outside runs and be a high tackle safety as well. Uh, Chris Trapasso is with us, CBS Sports Draft Analyst, running through what the Saints did. You're going to have to help us with the next one. They didn't have a three or four because they traded. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they went with a couple of smaller school guys in rounds five and six. So let's start with DeMarco Jackson, the linebacker from Appalachian State that the Saints took in round five. What can you tell us about him? I gave that pick in real time because I was running the CBS Sports Draft Tracker an A minus. I love that selection. I think learning from Demario Davis and Pete Warner will be huge for him. He's six one two thirty, which to me is good size for today's NFL linebacker. You don't want your linebackers much bigger than that. Uh, but I think that's probably why he slipped a little because most teams still do like to have the six two 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 thirty five two forty size at the linebacker position. DeMarco Jackson was mostly a quarterback spy and a blitzer on third downs. And I would normally like to see linebacker prospects that cover, but when he did cover, he made plays and his short area quickness, all the suddenness that I said is lacking with Alante Taylor is not lacking with DeMarco Jackson. And he's kind of a throwback type too, that he's smaller, but he will take on blocks. He will be that that's going to hit the fullback. So another player can make a play pretty good range to his game. I like his upside, even in coverage, because again, he can change directions in a hurry. And there's really good instincts that he showed on film, recognizing and understanding the route concepts behind him in coverage. So I think he will be a steal that the Saints got in the fifth round. And that's great to hear. Um, You can tell after the first player, you know, Chris, after the first two picks, which were needs on offense, a defensive-minded head coach won defense the rest of the way. Uh, <laughs> yep. Jordan Jackson, the defensive tackle out of Air Force. Listen, the Saints need depth at defensive tackle. How did they do with this pick? I love that selection. To get him that late, almost by to pick 200, 194 overall. Someone that has a really unique frame, that he's not one of those 6'1", 280-pound penetrators. He's 6'5". 280 to 290 pounds. So he really can play up and down the line of scrimmage. I gave that a B in real time. I thought of the day three interior defensive linemen, there were a lot of bigger nose tackle guys that can control blockers. Not too many of those quick first step quickness penetrators. That's what Jordan Jackson is. And I agree with you. They needed depth on their defensive line. And I almost all off season was really wanting in the draft for the Saints to try to look for a pass rusher that can threaten with his burst off the snap. Thought they'd maybe do it a little bit earlier, but to get it in round six with Jordan Jackson, again, I think on day three was another really good pick by the Saints. They didn't have quantity. The idea was obviously go quality. When you look at the whole of what the Saints did, what do you think? I did team grades on Sunday, but I was kind of out of it after all the draft work that I did, so I don't remember exactly what I gave them, but I do remember alluding to what you just mentioned, that I think with draft grades, the teams that have 12 and 13 picks and they're rebuilding and all these rookies are going to be starters, it's easy to gravitate toward a higher grade for them. The Saints only having these five picks, it's easier to say, hey, not a good draft, but really looking at the players, and the needs that were filled with the correct value, DeMarco Jackson, round five, great value. Penning was about the correct value. Olave, maybe a little bit of an overpayment having to trade up, but I think it'll be a great compliment to Michael Thomas and then Jordan Jackson in round six. I think it's about a B or a B plus. I, I like what they did. The Alante Taylor pick was a little questionable if he's a corner. Now, if he's a safety, I might boost that up to B plus or A minus. I really think for only having five picks, they did a good job. Hey, Chris, before you go, um, I know the undrafted free agents are all – every year, every team always has undrafted free agents that make the team. Uh, I want to ask you about m- maybe – I don't know if, if you've even seen the list for the Saints. They signed 17 of them. I don't expect you to know all of them. But there's one guy in particular that I think a lot of people here are excited about, and it's Abram Smith, the running back from Baylor, because mm. quite honestly, the Saints need – they need running back help, and they need depth at that position. And there was a thought here that they were going to actually draft a running back, didn't but they guaranteed him $222,000 as an undrafted free agent, which certainly tells you what they think about him as a player. So what do you think, Abram Smith, uh, what is his potential rookie and beyond in the NFL? 
he's one of the best slashers at the running back position with power in this draft class. I figured he would have gotten picked on the third day of the draft, but probably because he's not super elusive, he's not going to make defenders miss with great regularity. That's why he was still available. But he was the workhorse at Baylor. Uh, he's got good speed once he gets through the second level. He is a stretch zone play running back, plant his foot and get upfield or hit the cutback lane. I, I really liked Abram Smith later, again, in the draft. I'm surprised he wasn't picked. One other name I can mention, Dejon Dixon, the wide receiver from Nickel State. He was the focal point of that offense at 6'2 and 205, 210 pounds. Did not get schemed open very often. They let him face press man coverage, and he beat it frequently. Plays to that size at six foot two. I just like a player coming in, even from a small school level, that was that productive over four full seasons in college. And that's what Dijon Dixon was. Uh, and the Saints certainly have a history of allowing late round and undrafted free agent wide receivers have enough opportunity to make a team like Marquez Callaway, Marquez Colston, Deontay Harris. Dejon Dixon is a name that I feel like they'll like because they seem to like bigger wide receivers in their wide receiver room. You know, it's interesting. You mentioned another a small school guy. Another small school guy they gave a lot of money to is Rashid Shahid, um, uh, 222K. So as a maybe as a return specialist, they really seem to like him as well. Did you scout Rashid Shahid? I did not. Yeah, I mean, Sorry that's, about no, that. no, yeah, it's, it's I no, it. I mean, that's, that's a way down the Weaver list. State. Yeah. I know the, <laughs> yeah. I know the, I know the school, but I didn't, uh, I didn't sell him. No, man, I mean, I, I can understand. Um, Hey, the last thing before you go, you were here about a month ago and man, you were high on Derek Stingley and, uh, you, you came up roses on that one. Were even you surprised that Stingley ended up going all the way up to three? I wasn't, I mean, I, I guess I was kind of biased because I was such a big fan of Derek Stingley, but the film spoke louder than anything else. Any of the mystery about if he was healthy or not. Once he ran and jumped at the LSU pro day, I thought there was a good opportunity for him to be the first corner off the board. Nothing against Sauce Gardner, but to me, Derek Stingley, his positional versatility uh, and just the fact that he truly checks all the boxes and is not too tall. Uh, to play corner in today's NFL is perfect size, kind of the prototype outside corner. I figured the league was going to be high on him just like they were before his final season at LSU. Uh, great stuff, as always, man. We appreciate a couple of minutes. He's on Twitter at Chris Trapasso. Y'all give him a follow, CBS Sports NFL Draft Analyst. Thanks for the time, man. We appreciate it. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.